Hi, hello everyone. We are in the DCMI Virtual Student Forum 2 today. We'd like to welcome to our panelists and uh, forum participants. Um, actually, we have five presenters. Uh, so I guess we can just call upon the first presenter. Uh, Okay, um, I just uh, uh, give a title, uh, a method to enrich policy, metadata through automatic identification of policy tools. Yeah? Uh, Ms. Nali and me, Ms. Mengfei Li uh, from uh, Chengdu Library and Information Center, Chinese Academy of Science. Yeah? Uh, are you all ready, Miss Nali? Hello, hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen and slide. Mm, hello everyone, it's my pleasure to give a presentation here on music, uh, a postgraduate uh, a postgraduate from Chinese Academic of, of Science. Today, my topic is a method to enrich policy metadata through automatic identification of policy tools, taking open government information poli policies of Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Guiyang as an example. As a PowerPoint shows, my presentation is mainly divided into three parts. Firstly, let me introduce the research background and the situation. Policy research is one of the important content of library informa information. Currently, the metadata description of the policy is difficult to review the content of the policy in depth. Policy tools is a means of policy promotion and implementation. It's a part of policy data and a, a dimension of intrinsic future uh, and mining in policy research. Therefore, policy tools can be an important content of the policy metadata system. Let's take a look at the re re relevant research. What are um, policy tools? There is no uniform de definition. Since police um, policy tool is policy uh, enfor enforcement technology, uh, often thinks policy tools are government behaviors and uh, the mechanisms uh, in some way to regulate government behaviors. Um, based on the above viewpoints, although the current uh, circles have no uniform definitions of um, policy tools, they have similarities. Policy tools uh, can be understood as a variety of methods uh, adopted by policy makers to achieve specific uh, policy goals. Uh, 
uh, some scholars and purpose the uh, classification system for policy tools. Creation first um, purpose uh, 64 gener uh, generalist policy um, tools, but did not classify them. Classify them. Uh, in the above point of view, uh, we focus on uh, Roosevelt. Uh, Roosevelt's purpose and uh, proposal to divide and poly, um, policy and tools into three categories, supply tools, demand tools, and the environmental tools. The classified system covers to, um, covers most type of policy tools and is the most widely used in China. Supply tools are the supply of elements uh, for the government to expand such as information, technology, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure and capital talents for the uh, government to promote the development of a certain field. Demand tools shows that the government directly creates, uh, creates market demand, reduce uncertainty through go uh, government um, procurement, outsourcing, and other measures um, to promote the development of related field. Environmental tools to that the government improve the police environment environment uh, to promote its development in indirectly by finance, taxation, and uh, and statistics. Uh, and the regulations. At present, the policy and uh, the, the po policy analysis and process based on policy and tools include include um, tools include policy text collection, policy coding, policy tool identification, and uh, statistics statistical analyze. In this step, uh, in this steps, manual based uh, um, policy coding and uh, policy tool identification are um, cumbersome and uh, error prone, especially when faced with a large amount of data and a long time span. Therefore, this article intends to use computer science and computer technology and, and to replace the manual policy coding and the manual identification of policy tools. We achieve automatic identification of policy tools. Then I will introduce the experimental uh, design and the results. First, we use automatic collection and te technology to obtain policy tests in related fields and uh, um, pre-process uh, the test. Second, we manually uh, index the index the training data according to the policy tool classification system. Next, we select uh, appropriate text and uh, classification models for model training according to the uh, features of the policy tool uh, recognition test. Finally, use the uh, optimal model uh, for automatic classification of po um, policy tools. The data uh, source uh, include PKU law, their com, uh, Chinese uh, government website, uh, province, provincial and uh, uh, municipal official of websites. Searching with um, government data, open data, 
government resource, e-government, and uh, uh, information disclose, disclosure as searching uh, as search as search and terms. We crawl uh, 739 um, policy policy uh, document. Uh, there are three main steps for um, pre-processing. Uh, remove in arrest, arrest, uh, arrangement, uh, or uh, duplicate um, policies, metadata information spec specification, and uh, convert text uh, to paragraph. After processing 449 tests with 19,449 19, paragraphs are retained. As the table four shows, we establish a complete classification system system for policy tools. Based on this, two rounds of policy tool uh, indexing are carried on uh, carried out on 800 uh, paragraphs. How to select the model? Uh, we think the relationship between policy tool and uh, policy text is, uh, is important. Um, point one, uh, the policy um, paragraph can be long uh, or short. Um, point two, the characteristic, um, characteristics uh, of the test co um, corresponding to the policy, policy um, tools and are devised. Um, point three, core uh, vocabulary is important for the identification of policy tools. We select two traditional uh, machine learning models and three deep learning models to train and compare, compare the uh, results. The table five shows that the model uh, parallel model settings. As the table six uh, shows, all models can reach an accuracy rate of 68% and above, which shows that uh, is available to apply traditional uh, machine learning models and the deep learning models to uh, automatic identification of policy tools. In policy paragraphs, uh, phrase or words can better reflect the attributes of policy tools. And the deep learning models uh, are easier to learn semantic uh, thematically uh, related information, which is an ability that traditional machine learning models don't have. The CN model shows a good performance in the experiment, experiment with less um, uh, training time and uh, overhead. Therefore, we conducted experiments on the um, performance of the CNN model that integrates global information under different conf confidence. The higher confidence, the next data is retained and the um, performance of the model is greatly uh, improved. When the um, confidence is 97%. The data retention is 55.63%. And the accuracy rate of the model 
identification and policy tool reaches 95.44%. Finally, is the summary. We use the open uh, government information for um, policies uh, of Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Guiyang as a, depot, um, as, as a data source to explore uh, the use of this and deep learning methods to realize uh, automatic identification of policy tools. And the experiments have proved the effective, uh, effectiveness of the model under the condition of high con confidence. The deep learning model achieved a particle accuracy rate on, the, on a relatively high um, proportion portion of data and improves the uh, efficiency of policy uh, policy tool indexing is the first attempt at, at automatic automatic identification of policy tools which will enrich uh, policy metadata and is of great significance to the realization, realization of in-depth mining of policy content. content. Thanks, thanks for your listen, listening. Okay, thank you, Ming Li and Nali. Okay, I guess um, that's a good topic uh, as a startup in our session. Um, I will return to the floor if any uh, questions or comment for improvement from other panels or attendees. Any questions so far? Can you see the chat room? There is question there. Yeah. Uh, the first question, yeah, from the uh, from the fine way. What's the functions of metadata, and how to influence the results? Thank you. What is the functions of metadata and how to influence the results? Mm -hmm. uh, metadata is the data about data or the data describing data. Uh, the policy uh, is a kind of data. So uh, the policy metadata is the data describing of, of the policy, which can be in units of uh, articles, or um, policy paragraph. The rich, uh, re, uh, our research uh, is to achieve a structured, uh, structured describing uh, of um, policy. Uh, the policy title, uh, time, type, and uh, policy tools are all attributes of policy metadata. Okay, uh, hopefully uh, Fanwe um, agree or um, the, the answer is sufficient. My understanding, uh, the, the, the research context is about the government website, right? So of course the policy, uh, the, the metadata that being created could be beneficial for the uh, government uh, implementation and next uh, policy uh, exchange or updates, right? So any question, any other question for the first presenter?
If not, um, can I throw out one questions? Yeah, you could. You want to ask anything? No, no, no. Okay, maybe I can ask one questions. Um, to Nali or Ming Fei. Uh, what is the limitation that you found out after completing the study? Uh, the, the, the experimental process um, and maybe we could be uh, you want to highlight for the future research the limitation that you encountered Ming Fei or Nali want to answer? No answer for me, Ming Fei. Okay, um, I can consider that um, uh, you uh, don't highlight or encounter any limitation from your study, from your current study. So I give another chance for other questions so far. If you anyone have other questions to highlight or to ask, if not, we can go to the second presentation. Okay. I try to share for our details about our second presentation. Okay. The topic about developing a link conceptual model for Zhang Dakian's collection. Presenter Jun Song Lin and Yin Lo. Yeah. The supervisor or mentors is Wei Fan, Assistant Professor Sichuan University. Okay. Without uh, further ado, the floor is yours. May I show my screen? Yeah. Okay. Just have a noise. Can you see? Yeah, can okay. I can see it? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lin Jing Song, major in information science from Sichuan University. It's a pleasure to be here for its presentation of developing a ranked conceptual model for Zhang Zaqian's collections. Cultural heritage is precious for a country and the world. Digital collections can better promote the conservation and the preservation of cultural heritage and enrich research and education through openness and sharing. The digital practice of cultural heritage is abundant around the world, such as the European Annual of the European Digital Library, the Sample Project Series developed by Finland and uh, Linked Arts. This project has gradually promoted the preservation and the sharing of cultural heritage in the region and be used in digital humanities research. China is rich in cultural heritage resources, such as Don Juan Frescas. Chinese paintings and the bronzes. Some digital achievements such as digital Donghuang and uh, Dong Qichang art project. In addition to this project, China has more cultural heritage resources that can be found, such as the works of famous Chinese painter Gang Daqian. 
We will use the linked art to construct a concept model of Zhang Da Qian's collections. Zhang Da Qian, Chang Tai Qian, 1899-1983, was born in Neijiang, Sichuan province. Three main activities for his artistic experience and Don Guan Zhongli became a turn poet in his painting style. During his 16-year creative career, he has created a new way 13,000 printers and some calligraphies and selling carvings, such as uh, a repentance of radius, a serious works created during Duan Guanzuri and the landscape paintings created in his, in his later years. Duan Guan, frescoes, bridge colors, and heavy stair influenced the Zhang Da Qian's paintings there of splash ink and splash color in his later landscape paintings. During his, his Don Huang journey, Zhang Da Qian set out from Chengdu, Sichuan, and arrived at Don Huang via Lanzhou, Xinning, Wuwei, Zhang Ye, and Jiayi Pass. The large number of ancient Chinese frescoes in Don Huang Mogao greaters attracted Zhang Da Qian, and more than 300 frescoes were copied in two years. For example, he copied the Wu Bai Chang Dao Chen Fu Tu from Mogao Greater's K206 and copied the Sui Wei Moer Shi Ji Tu Zhou and the Sui Wen Shu Wen Ji Tu Zhou from K203. In 1941, Zhang Da Qian asked his friend to hold an exhibition entitled the exhibition of Zhang Da Qian's trip to the visitor in Chengdu. It more and more copied paintings. The exhibition gradually spread to Lanzhou, Chongqing, Shanghai, and other cities. This painter stimulated a strong Don Juan push in China at the time. His style has gradually influenced the Chinese painting war, as indicating the style of Don Juan frescoes and his art painting scares. He has formed a unique painting style. His exhibition has gradually moved from her to around, including India, Japan, France, and the United States. It was mentioned that when Zhang Da Qian held exhibition in Paris in 1957, he had a communication with Picasso in Nice, Paris, the Minch, and uh, exchanged gift. As more and more works are exhibited and created, Zhang Da Qian's works are distributed in some museums and galleries in China, Europe, and the United States for various reasons, and a considerable number of works are still distributed in various extra houses and individual characters. Based on, based on concept model and uh, supported by schematic web and uh, linked data, a model can be constructed to aggregate and uh, link the uh, various cultural heritage resources, and collecting and uh, link the data from ground, extra houses, and individuals. A uh, web resource requires some kind of practice such as CI.CI, RDF, linked open data, and the idea of seven star linked data by Professor Arrow in the first day. These standards and the recommendations provide a good development for the semantic web and the linked data of cultural heritage. We will use the linked art to construct a conception model of Zhang Da Qian's constructions. Linked Edge is communicating, working together to create a shared model based on linked open data to describe art. The main contribution of linked art is the development of a linked art data model, which focus on artworks and the music-oriented activities. It's based on CI.CIM and the linked open data. And the GTV covers to keep the consistency of term use now. The communicating has many partner projects in the construction. One goal of the wider project has used the linked open linked art data model to build a platform based on one goal's artworks and their activities. On the detailed page of each wall, there are metadata descriptions and uh, details from multiple institutions, such as uh, the Fire 1917 from RKD, and the one girls later from Van Gogh Museum. The works one the one girl's works website page is linked to data from multiple institutions, which enrich the description of the work. 
Using the approach of linked arts and the Van Gogh with white project, we construct a concept model of Zhang Da Qian's collections based on the linked art data model. The model takes activities of events as the center to us to the elements of events, who, person, where, place, what object, and when, time. Take an example to illustrate. The person is to describe some of Zhang Da Qian's personal information the object has is used to describe his work, like a page for the spring, Tao Yuan Tu. And the activity class is used to describe the event of the work was anxious in Hong Kong in 2016. In the conceptual model of Zhang Da Qian's collections, time and price class appear in every event or activity they add to him. Therefore, we concentrated the three main classes in the model, person, object, and activity. The person class is, is used for human, such as Zhang Da Qian, with attributes shared by people, including name, nationality, time and place of birth, time and place of death, and the digital links to the digital image of Zhang Da Qian on Wikipedia. In order to make the idea discoverable as much as as much as possible and maintain the consistency of the data description. We use the AAT urine and the teacher in the getting vocabularies to construct the person class. The object is used for our works. Object is used to describe Zhang Da Qian's work, page for the three, Tao Yuan Tu, which has attributes of art works, including work time, also, Creation time, style, scene, technique, etc. Object class is applied to the Gaiti vocabulary in AAT and the urine. The activity is used. The activity class is used for actual event. The activity class is used to describe the event that Zhang Da Qian's work, Tao Yuan Tu, was actual in Hong Kong in 2016. Attributes including other time and the price of actual the specific object in the activity, the type of artworks and the amount of actual, the AAT and the teacher in the graph. We try to use the linked art approach to link the three main classes and uh, time class, place class to construct an event-based link conceptual model. The basic model describes Zhang Da Qian's production activity and the use the produced by to link the object. The price edge was linked with the price carried out by was linked with the person and uh, used the time span linked with time. The model can describe and systematically express different activities or events by using different properties. In the next work, we will continue to enrich and explain the model and the character more detail about Zhang Da Qian's works and reality activities from multiple institutions such as uh, Sichuan Museum and Zhang Da and Akhtari Zhang Da Qian Art Museum, the encoding new style in just LD in the future of linked published platform for Zhang Da Qian's collection will be built. Finally, welcome to Chengdu. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ding Song, for the um, visualizing or uh, an informative uh, presentation just now. Um, it is easy for me to understand with the visual, for example, your conceptual models, your visual of um, arts about the Gikon. Uh, that's um, first time I'm here about that. Dakin's collections in the pictures. Okay, um, maybe we can open for the question from the floor. You uh, also can write down. Yeah, Armasia. Can I ask you a question? You have uh, why you choose linked art model? Mm, did you 
make any changes or you just use the cloud model directly? Uh, did you, uh, on the DCMI's keynote on the first day, we have um, what you heard probably the sample model. They, they also based on the linked art uh, CDAR CRM, but they have their own particular properties and the classes. Uh, I wonder in your model design do you have your own separate or additional properties and classes or you just use uh, yeah so you you see the sample model right um, i think the actual provides a series of classes and the properties that can be used in different contexts uh, and it's focused on artworks and uh, music oriented activities. And according to John Da Chen's works and the reality activities, we try to uh, identify various entities and their relationships and show them in RDA first. Mm. Different classes using different properties can establish relationship and the star extents can be validated, like production. Expression actual with time, price, and people. Mm. Chen. <laughs> Sorry. Good, thank you. I, I think he has multiple names, right? In the exhibition are, when he had the exhibition in different countries, was his name all changed? So it's not Zhang Da Chen, but it's something else. Yeah, I'm sure you will probably have a long list of the names. Uh, <laughs> Zhang Da Qian is his uh, Archer names, and uh, he has many names. Uh, like in China, he has uh, Zhang Zheng Quan. But, but the in English uh, natural is saying Zhang Chang Tai Chen. Okay, I guess could be um, Mr. Jun Song uh, will take um, uh, uh, will take um, more uh, other discussions or maybe he can take a look other uh, samples and other literature yeah, to refer back. Uh, just take it as an improvement or any um, a good input, right? Okay, any other questions from the floor? I guess could be uh, Marcia want to add. Anyone to give some suggestions, another suggestions or comment? So if if I would like uh, can ask you um I'm not also familiar with the uh, arts uh, collections or arts metadata but what else um uh, other collection that you already encounter or you already uh, 
take part in the in your study or oh, what are the collection that um, a Chinese uh, researcher already study on beside Dakin's collection beside Zhang Dakin's collection what other arts that already been um, collect in terms of uh, cultural heritage in China Sorry, I, I don't know how to answer these questions. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, during your literature review or during your um, uh, requirement study, do you find any other collections or do you find any other study that have similar with your topics? Hmm. Like a fungus with a wide project. We, I, 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 sorry, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I understand that you can figure out it. And now, so thank you for the best uh, presentation. Thanks, Marcia, for the comment and suggestions. Um, I guess we can go for the next presenter. Introduce first. Okay, the titles is to a model for enhancing e-resources utilization in Kenyan public universities academic libraries, yeah? Mr. Hosea from the Technical University of Kenya. The supervisor or mentors is Prof. Joseph Skipangats. Okay, I guess uh, the floor is yours now. Uh, let me allow me to share my screen. Yeah, sure. Just a second. Are you able to see my slides? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Just a second. Slides. Um, what about that one? Is it feasible now? Yeah, in the uh, okay. presentation mode, right? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to this presentation. My name is uh, Jose Chumba from uh, the Technical University of Kenya, uh, uh, here in Kenya, Africa. I'm going to make a presentation uh, on uh, paper entitled "Towards a Model for Enhancing E-Resource Utilization." in Kenyan public universities, academic libraries. It is, uh, we are going to report a research in progress. Yeah. So welcome. So we uh, understand that uh, uh, the first library actually dates almost 5,000 years ago. Uh, and the first collection was actually majorly uh, clay tablets. But over time, the content of these particular institutions or libraries have actually been transformed to paper and other printed materials. 
And currently, with the latest technological advancements, we are seeing uh, tech or technology enabled resources, which we are referring to them as e resources or electronic resources. So, um, in view of this, uh, libraries actually still remain to be key in supporting the three activities that normally take place in institutions of higher learning. These are teaching, learning, and research. So in Kenya, we basically have three uh, major uh, types of broad categories of libraries. We have the national libraries, which has, are actually controlled by what we refer to as Kenya National Library Service, mandated by the Kenyan law, uh, specifically in capital to five of the laws of Kenya. And then secondly, we have the community libraries, which are basically established in uh, places that are disadvantaged in a manner. So basically they are established to empower disadvantaged communities and disadvantaged people by actually promoting their literacy levels as well as reading culture. On the other hand, which is actually the third category is the academic libraries, which are attached to institutions of higher learning, uh, which they serve students as well as the faculty of the said institution to in, in actually providing uh, them with up-to-date materials. So the integration of technology in provision of these library services um, to all patrons who are actually technologically uh, savvy in many instances has actually become inevitable in this era of IT and especially during this time of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So such integrations, these are technological integrations has actually brought about the e-resources, which in other words, we normally refer to as digital environment. So where resources are actually, so the e-resources or digital environment in library is actually explained by a phenomena where resources are available online and are accessed ubiquitously. That's mean, that means anywhere, everywhere, anytime. So there is an urgent need, therefore, for such institutions of higher learning and also their libraries to actually implement um, several interventions that seek to promote the availability of these scholarly e-resources and information so as to support their mandate that is the mandate of the universities and other institutions of higher learning so in an effort to achieve this uh, that is increased availability and access for these e-resources kenyan academic libraries have actually formed a consortium which they refer to it as a kenya library and information services consortium which was established in 2003. So these particular universities come together, they formed this particular group to enable them to subscribe to e-resources. So it's, it's a wide variety of resources, but at a, at a cheaper cost. We have uh, others such as Malongo in 2018, Tega in 2013, Alphonse in 2015, Boga in 2018, who said that in spite of the interventions, to promote e-resource usage, the real issue among us many developing nations, which actually Kenya is one of them, is that there is still, rather the usage of these resources still remain at low levels. In other words, they are still unsatisfied. So I'll go straight to my statement of the problem. And here we are saying that um, availability of Rather, availability and access of resources remain an important pillar to education, especially in institutions of higher learning, because they promote teaching, learning, and research. So the creation and subsequent use of these online resources in Kenya and other developing countries is actually supported by the upward trend in internet penetration, which in Kenya is currently starting at, I mean, standing at 43%. That's the internet penetration as well as the availability of technological infrastructure and uh, solutions. So in Kenya, academic libraries subscribe to these e-resources through what I initially talked about uh, uh, as a consortium, please consortium, um, which provides these resources at my subsidized cost. However, they reported very low levels of usage. And in this case, the Technical University of Kenya Library receives only between 500 to 600 downloads a week. You know, that translates to 100 downloads, averaged in 100 per day, against the 15,000 plus students and library users, I mean, and, and, and uh, uh, university faculty. 
So this is uh, according to TUK library data 2021. This is very low and therefore uh, we require a very urgent measure to counter this particular downward uh, or rather trend, observed trend um, of very low usage of e-resources. So the existing empirical literature, uh, um, empirical literature on e-resource utilization. So a literature review revealed that uh, uh, research on on, on e-resources actually has me measured so much on particular antecedents or other particular factors that determine e-resource usage. Other researchers look at the, what could be the effect of e-resource awareness. Others look at the literacy levels individually. Others look at technological infrastructure. Others look at promotions, you know. Uh, so so, so uh, the existing literature talks about this field in, in a more uh, in individualistic way, if I may call it so. So little comprehensive research therefore has been conducted um, uh, uh, that attempts to critically examine this phenomenon. So and this particular study, which basically looked at uh, the utilization of e-resources at the Technical University of Kenya, it looked at the associated challenges with a view of proposing a model for enhancing e-resource utilization in Kenyan public university academic libraries. So this particular study is actually timely and relevant, especially at this time of pandemic, where most learning and research is actually taking place remotely, or in other words, resources are actually accessed online. So the study is, uh, was actually guided by the following three objectives. One of them was to examine the challenges in the utilization of e-resources at TUK library. So what were the challenges? Secondly, was to look at the interventions that actually could be implemented so as to increase utilization of e-resources uh, at the university library. And number three was actually to propose a model. What model would now be uh, trying to enhance e-resource utilization in the institution, in the institution library? So therefore, uh, the literature review, I will be very brief here, is that uh, the IT developments has actually revolutionized information processes all the way from creation to uh, dissemination. This is actually a technological push. From the other hand, we equally have the user demands. Uh, the patrons are actually you know, giving demands and giving requirements to the library uh, uh, facilities to have necessitated library or other academic libraries to innovate new ways of service delivery, i.e. provision of e-resources so as to satisfy its uh, users. However, e-resources in institutions of higher learning, especially developing nations, are underutilized. That has been well said. So we have a author here called Matima in 2017 who attributed this particular trend of low resource usage, low e-resource usage, to a myriad of challenges ranging from users themselves to actually organizational level challenges. So I'll start by uh, looking at this. We have Swain and Panda in their two papers of 2009, 2010, I mean 209A and 209B, they actually propose two categories of e-resource challenges. One, they said there are those challenges that are user-centric in nature. So they are associated to the users themselves. And then secondly, there are those that are associated with the organization themselves. If I can give a snapshot of user-centric ones, the, one of them is the lack of awareness. If I, as, as a user, am not aware, that's a challenge. Secondly, is limitation in terms of information such skills. Uh, another one is lack of information literacy, inadequate computer skills, and others. On the other hand, organizational level challenges include insufficient access to computers, low internet connectivity, inadequate uh, funds, among others. Okay, so we continue uh, looking at this. So uh, we have Mutegra Italy in 2013, a worker in 2018, Nazir Adwani in 2015, among others, who also observed that the limited information literacy skills, these are the individual or user-centric challenges. The user's poor attitudes, the low internet bandwidth are some of the challenges as well. Now, Mawere and uh, Sai in 2018, as well as Yeboa and uh, Loki in 2017, contend that unavailability of relevant e-resources, inadequate, and low internet connectivity, low bandwidth, among others, which are actually organizational factors in the utilization of e-resources. So it is therefore evident from the review of this literature that challenges facing e-resource utilization span from those that are related to the users themselves to those that are actually attributable to the organization 
and the organization in this sense is actually the university itself or uh, the industry and the library itself. So we have the user centric factors and then we have the organizational factors like I have said. Okay, and then we have interventions that will be put forward to promote the, the usage of the resources uh, in, in academic libraries. We have uh, Mila with Nachi 2012 and Saikia 2013 who said that the interventions include the following technological resources need to be made available, availability of library support services, uh, information literacy skills need to be improved, computer competence need to be uh, uh, given to the users and, and the service providers, resource usefulness need to also be ensured that it is there, among others. These are key interventions. Saikia so also uh, went ahead to say that users with computer literacy skills or in other words, self-efficacy skills are actually able to utilize e-library resources compared more, more than their counterparts who have little skills. We have then 2010 also who argued that the usage of e-resources was much more dependent on the user and the purposes of using these particular resources. In which, in this case, Swain and Panda uh, referred to them as user-centric interventions. So Swain and Panda therefore into a line to uh, A and B, other factors are actually beyond users themselves. And in this case, we are saying that these interventions that need to work so as to promote the utilization of e-resources can be on the other end, the user-based interventions. And on the other hand, they can also be organization-based. So um, uh, Yeboa and Blocky in 2017 at Shira time, e-resource utilized interventions such as fostering awareness through, so that there's also need to foster the utilization of these resources by employing other many awareness uh, 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 methodologies, which could be traditional or even the met, uh, modern methods of awareness creation. Uh, so other interventions are uh, uh, as follows. So it can be concluded or the bottom line is that the provision of favorable e-resource use interventions promote utilization of e-resources. So these interventions also range from user specific to those that are organizational uh, based. So this position corroborates Adeniran 2013, Watson 2015, and Yebo and Loki in 2017, who argue that systems of e-resource utilization interventions is critical, but also other factors need to be examined. Okay. So um the research findings. Before I go to research findings, uh, there is, uh, I don't know why I'm missing a slide on, uh, on methodology. There is a slide on methodology that I seem to have, uh, to have bypassed. Oh, it's here, sorry, it's here. So, uh, the methodology, the, the study site was actually the Technical University of Kenya, and this was an interpretative research philosophy because uh, we sought to understand the world and construct the meaning out of it. So qualitative research approach was actually utilized in this place, or rather in this research, to understand the challenges as well as the interventions that can be put forward so as to increase the usage of e-resources. The study population was 14. Uh, basically, uh, these were all the library staff as well as uh, uh, doctoral students, doctoral students in their year two pursuing a PhD in information and knowledge management. Uh, so non-probability sampling technique was actually utilized in selecting respondents who would form the sample size of this study. And the sampling process was actually influenced by the researcher's consideration of who is better placed to answer the research questions as well as the time and financial resources. So key informants interviews was actually utilized in collecting data that have the generation of the teams for analysis. And uh, we have the sample respondents, which was a good representation actually, uh, which involved uh, respondent one who was the first librarian, the senior librarian, respondent two, systems librarian, respondent three, technician who are actually two, uh, responded for and five, and then PhD candidates in their second year in the Department of Information and Knowledge Management. They responded, uh, student responded six, all the way to student responded ten. So, research findings. 
So it is evident, therefore, from the research uh, that was conducted that uh, the e-resources subscribed to by the Technical University of Kenya are actually the e-resources provided by the consortium, the GLIS consortium, and, uh, which was actually established in 2003. And uh, the consortium, uh, through the consortium, the members are actually able or eligible for discounted pricing of two products, that is Remote X and MyLoft. The two actually facilitate the seamless anywhere, anytime access to library subscribe e-resources. So the e-resources are the e-books. We have Taylor and Francis, e-library, Springer, Dictionary, World Bank, Open Knowledge Repository, Open Book Publishers, while e-journals are Cochrane Library, EBSCO Host, uh, Recited Databases, in Bank University Press, Sage, among others. On the other hand, the key databases are Emerald, Springer, Oxford, IEEE, Electronic Databases, among others. So the challenges, therefore, that were actually uh, established to be really derailing the utilization of the resources are as follows. One of them is the limited awareness of the existing resources. We have the student respondent who said that one of them said, I'm actually a second year to the student. And honestly, I'm only aware of Emerald, IEEE, Taylor and Francis Journal uh, and Springer Journals being in the journal subscribed by Team Taylor. Another one said, there are some library orientation sessions organized when you join campus. But after that, you are left alone. So on the other hand, the staff of the institution, one of them said, it has taken us very long time since we last had an e-resource awareness a forum organized by the library. And the university librarian said, we get limited funding from the university. And this has actually limited the number of awareness forums we organize. So we can see from all above that uh, there is non-existence of efforts to create awareness of existing e-resources, which would actually be the reason why we are seeing very low utilization of e-resources. Yebo and Flocky in 2017 actually said, there is need for libraries and information centers to foster awareness, either through traditional or even the modern methods of awareness creation. Second one is actually the inadequate uh, no, the second one is actually the low information literacy levels. We have the student respondents who said, majority of some said that they failed to use e-resources available in TUK library because they are unaware of how they would go about to get them. So that means there are skills, the information literacy skills are very low. Further, another one who is actually an employee said, I have always supported few lecturers teaching communication skills to first year students by coming into their classes and as a guest lecturer to train their students on library use, which is basically one of the topics in their year one course called communication skills. So we can see here that there is actually need to build on the information literacy levels of all students in the institution. So it's evident that uh, the institution have limited information literacy skills attributable to limited awareness programs among others. Then we have uh, another one being the inadequate promotional strategies. You know, lack of forums that help users to be aware of existing resources. A student respondent said that the library need to organize trainings for us to know how to access as well as to show us uh, to how to use e-resources. They also need to go further and try to understand my information seeking behavior so that uh, it can facilitate targeted marketing, just like business in the industry do nowadays. Another one said, with the help of predictive analytics, it would be very easy for me as a systems librarian to know which departments and faculties are utilizing which resources and to what extent. This would help us design user specific interventions and strategies. So it is evident, therefore, that such promotions are can even be taken uh, a notch higher by employing the predictive analytics to provide users based on the historical data. And this would even enable selective dissemination of information. Then another one is the lack of flexibility in adopting to the uh, changes where TUK library has actually remained static, yes, yet user needs are actually dynamic. We have the respondents here who said that with prevailing COVID-19, TUK library is yet to implement the library virtual experience to be accessed remotely. So that speaks to uh, something. And then underfunding is another one, whereby in 2020, the total amount of money that was allocated to the university library was 5 million Kenyan shillings, which you get it's somewhat for the $3,500 US dollars, together for all library operations, including it is also subscription. 
Whereas ERISO subscription stands at 10 million per academic year. So ERISO subscription stands at 10 million. The amount of money that was allocated to was 5 million Kenyan students. Of course, it was not even enough for ERISO's uh, subscription. Now, the question is left. What would happen to other resources, even like trainings? You know? So this has been actually occasioned or despite the existing uh, Commission for University Education Policy, which stipulates that at least 10% of the entire university's budget needed to go to the library, right? But this can actually be explained by the fact that in Kenya here, there has been uh, uh, low uh, funding rates from the government to the universities. So it's similar sentiments are echoed by Swain and Panda 209, who noticed that other than user-centric factors, other aspects beyond users uh, are actually contribute to under utilization. In this case, is actually the low funding. Then we have limited technological infrastructure, whereby it's actually up to 2020. Rather, before 2020, the university did not have comp any computer. Of course, the computers were, that were available were the ones being used by employees. So there was no any computer available for patrons to use in accessing resources. So in 2020, they actually received a batch of 300 computers of high-end spe uh, specifications, if you may call it so, 500 GB hard disk, 8 GB RAM, uh, Core i5 all the way to 7, and having speeds of over 2.8 gigahertz donated by the government of Canada whereby 200 were actually taken by the Department of ICT, and the remaining 100 are currently in, being installed in the library to constitute the new Technical University of Kenya Library IT Center, which is actually invention to help, uh, to help uh, uh, patrons to access e-resources. So therefore, it is evident that uh, the, the, the technological infrastructure has also limited the utilization of of technological solutions such as the power of predictive analytics, among others. So uh, I'm almost finishing. So lack of accessibility in two fronts. One of them is that you need to be in the university so that you can access in the most e-resources. And secondly, is that the, what uh, the patrons or the students are actually seeing as important to them is actually not available in the list of the resources that have been subscribed to by the institution. So in view of this, respondents generally agree that there is need for the library to work with IT to provide VPN, virtual private networks to patrons so that they can be able to access from wherever they are. And secondly, there is also need uh, to, uh, uh, there is also need to, uh, to work with the faculties so as the library can understand what the faculty requires and therefore help in providing uh, uh, what meets their need. And then we have limited IT skills where most of them are actually, the students themselves do not have uh, 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 capable, or are not capable of using or exploiting the library systems that are there to actually search for the resources they are looking for. And then secondly, it's actually from the part of the library itself, whereby only five out of the 30 employees were actually deemed to be comfortable with IT innovations and integrations. Yet they are actually supposed to be helping uh, the users to utilize their resources. So the non-existence of trainings and retrainings, especially on IT systems, has actually contributed to this as well. Limited uh, internet connectivity is another one, whereby the internet penetration in Kenya stands at 43%. And in the university, where we have over 15,000 students and over 1,200 employees, all are actually only utilizing five MPPS. So this is very low during peak time, especially. Respondents here actually said, R1 and R3, our bandwidth is as low as 5 Mbps compared to our population. There is need for directorate of ICT to increase this. So it's evident that there is need for urgent measure to provide stable and fast internet connectivity with the university with redundant links to help whenever the ISPs are available. Okay. We have Maweria and Sai 2018, who actually you know, cooperates with this kind of thinking, who said that there is an urgent need for institutions to ensure that they subscribe to appropriate bandwidth packages. Yeah. which are in, co in commensurate with the number of students enrolled at the particular institution. So other reported challenges were that they seem to be
Mr. Hosea. Thank you, Mr. Hosea. I seem to have uh, to have missed uh, my internet. Seem to have. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, I, I guess we can uh, conclude your yes. presentation me, with the. Allow me to conclude. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, therefore, here therefore we are saying that we are proposing a he resource utilization model, whereby we are saying that the thematic analysis of the respondents view led to the generation of four constructs, which formed the proposed model for enhancing e-resource utilization. These constructs are the user-centered interventions, institutional-based interventions, and then we have the faculty, e-library alignment, and then we have the enhanced e-resource utilization. We can actually see this from the from from this diagram here, which I'm calling it a model for enhancing e-resource utilization. We have user-centered interventions on this other end. These are interventions that are related to the users themselves. And then we have institutional-based interventions. And then I'm saying, yes, the two can actually lead to enhanced e-resource utilization. But then again, I'm saying that e-resource, faculty e-resource alignment is actually a moderator. It moderates the relationship between the two. And that if at all we create an alignment between faculty and e-resource, other than providing the interventions, then we are expected to see an increased e-resource utilization. In conclusion, this study has reported research findings of work in progress, providing some basic uh, insights on e-resource utilization challenges, interventions that seeks to increase and sustain e-resource in Kenya public universities. It is also evident from the study findings that the utilization of e-resources is attributed to two aspects, user-centric and organizational based uh, challenges. However, the interventions to increase e-resource utilization need to rotate also around these two uh, factors or categories, user-centric and organizational based interventions. So other than e-resource utilization interventions, uh, increasing e-resource utilization also require fostering and sustaining faculty e-library alignment. So the proposed model for enhancing utilization of e-resources among public universities in Kenya uh, takes alignment as a factor mediating the relationship between the independent variables and the dependent variables. So this study contributes the body of knowledge by introducing a new dimension, which we are calling it faculty e Thank you uh, for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hosea. Just um, try to call any questions for Mr. Hosea. I guess a lengthy um, descriptions or presentation from Mr. Hosea be so informative uh, to us. Approximately around 10 limitation or that come, uh, that rise up by the Mr. Bosia, right? In terms of um, e-resources utilization, under utilization. So, uh, If we don't have any questions, so hopefully I guess um, Mr. Hoswa, you can do well uh, more with this study. Uh, you can uh, improve your model just now. Uh, try to evaluate it, elaborate it um, based on your input. And it could be you can take a look at the um, people factors, uh, People's challenge in terms of staff, Seth. Um, maybe I encountered that you not, not really go detail on your uh, staffing resources uh, in terms of readiness of your staff to all these uh, e-resources utilizations. Eh? Maybe you 
you can take a look on that methods as well. That's just my uh, suggestion for you. Okay, thank you. Um, we would like to go to the next presenter. Thank you. Okay, I try to uh, the modeling. The title for the next presenter is Modeling and Publishing the Chinese Information Retrieval Lexicon with Bob Bench, Yikun Han, and Shimin Yan from Sichuan University. The supervisor and mentor again is uh, Assistant Professor Wei Fan from Sichuan University. Okay, the floor is yours. You can start to share. Your slide, you can, okay, both of you in the same. Okay, thank you. I will just share my screen. And okay. So is the screen uh, visible and is my voice clear? Mm, I guess you can speak louder. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I am Yi Kun Han, and uh, he is Shi Min Yan. We are students from uh, Sichuan University, majoring in information resource management. And let me explain how we modeled and published the prestigious Chinese lexicon about information retrieval. Here is the outline. The first part is our motivation, then the lexicon data modeling, including scores based modeling and ontologic memory based modeling. After that is the work bench powered semantic publishing, including sheets to RDF, concept model, and the semantic search. So let's start by posing a question. Why should we digitalize the lexicon? Improvements will be made from several aspects by converting it from paper-based to web-based form. In terms of timeliness, the lexicon can keep pace with the times through digitalization. And for data structure, it changes from linear form to network form. As for uh, retrieval function, semantic search is powered rather than simple browsing, which has been one of the motivations for our work. The development of uh, semantic web and linked data provides a technical basis for data modeling. In the semantic web stack, the resource description framework is introduced. Also, it has been constantly evolving and will be the basis of linked data open cloud. As seen in the linguistic cloud, some of the lexicon have been semantically processed. After clarifying the benefits and technical basis, let's go back to the lexicon itself. This lexicon constructs the theoretical system of information retrieval in Chinese library and information science field. Not only that, the distinguished author, Professor Qi Yu Zhang, stated that the idea of it is complementary to natural language retrieval. And since this lexicon is consists of technical words, it's similar to glossary. Due to Zhang's classification of KOS, glossary belongs to terminus, and in KOS landscape, it is a specific type of knowledge organization system beyond traditional authority files. By increasing the dimensionality of the structure, we can represent uh, more meanings and enrich semantic functions. Now that we have KOS as a generic term, the next step is to find a data model. Simple knowledge organization system, as the W3C recommendation, is technically designed for KOS. Since SCOS is concept-centric, it enables to construct linked and integrated data through associating concepts. In order to implement semantic modeling, the elements of the lexicon need to correspond to the vocabularies in scores. For own properties of lexical entries, terms are represented by lexical labels, while content of terms are represented by documentation properties. For relationships between lexical entries, Concept hierarchy and concept association are represented by semantic relation properties. However, after we finish the initial processing of the data, 
We found that SCOS was not that appropriate for lexical modeling. SCOS is a general purpose of KOS and in comparison, Ontolex Lemon as a specialized lexical model is more suitable to represent the extended properties of the lexicon. As shown in the figure, some of the lexical entries contain multiple senses separated by brackets in between. In scores, this can only be represented by the unsegmented definition. However, in Ontolex Lemon, ontological modeling allows for efficient text segmentation. So now let's take the look, a look at the conceptual model of Antonex Lemon. Since concepts are units of thoughts, ideas, meanings, or objects and events, we believe that the concepts should not be disassembled, and Antonex Lemon can provide many correspondence between lexical entries, lexical concepts, and lexical senses. The semantic relationships between them are that uh, entries evoke abstract and mental concepts. Entries have corresponding senses and the senses lexicalize concepts. The figure on the right is an encoding example, including the core lexical entry and lexical sense. A lexical concept corresponds to two lexical entries and two lexical senses. For preparing the publishing, the figure on the left indicates the conversion process of the data format. The copy is, is in word form when the lexicon is published, and after entering part of the lexical data into a CSV file according to class and the properties, we need a plugin for conversion from data sheets into RDF. And the workbench is just perfect for our needs. It's a semantic web platform for collaborative editing and multilingual terminology. It has a wide range of applications, such as Agrovoc multilingual C-source, Eurovoc C-source, and Informia. By using workbench, Nexco database of semantic relation between words is established. Coming back to the requirement just mentioned, share to RDF. Share to RDF provides the conversion from CSV to RDF format through subject mapping, which is header best. In the process, we also need to use per language as a medium, which correlates classes and properties through nodes and graphs. The concept model, on the other hand, is mainly used for data update needs, many multilingual translation, association with other data sets, and the semantic addition and changes. Unlike RDF statements, users without the metadata base can also make changes directly. The lexicon data not only needs to be sequenced but also retrieved. The Sparkle statement enables semantic retrieval. Relational queries like the selecting all related lexical concepts and the quantitative queries like counting all the levels in the lexicon can be sorry. Sorry. The sparkle set settlement enables semantic retrieval uh, relationship Relational queries like selecting all related lexical concepts and quantitative queries like counting all the levels in the lexicon can be realized. At present, we still face some problems, such as the, the subclass of lexical entries like word, multi word expression, and the effect in Antilex Nemo is not appropriate in Chinese context when semantic modeling. Special symbols are difficult to structure them during RDF encoding. In RDF publishing, the update made in Workbench cannot be reconverted back to RDF tables, so it's difficult to make changes at the data level. The next part is our future prospect. Take Lexicon as an example. The data flow is cycled. Front end servers provide basic functions to non-ticket researchers. Non-ticket researchers give, give feedback to KOS experts 
and the QS export implement data semantic modeling and publishing through back-end technology. Back-end technology and front-end service are merged by Bookbench through this cycle. We hope to make better use of the existing metadata and integrate the lexicon into the linked open, open data cloud. Finally, for acknowledgement, this work is a part of Chinese information retrieval terminology knowledge best project, which is supported by the Chinese Index Society Foundation. So that's all for sharing. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Ikun, Ikun and uh, Shimi. So I open uh, any question for the presenter. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I guess got a question from Marcia. How will you enable to enable the normal audience who have no background of SparkQL query language? Uh, I think uh, uh, referencing to the AgroVoc Sparkle endpoint, we can follow the templates and the uh, since uh, AgroVoc offers SCOS-based modeling and uh, we are providing ontological-based modeling, we can make some adjustments. And uh, uh, now we are facing the problem is that uh, we can't uh, combine the front-end and back-end technology. So we can offer uh, online templates for the non-tech researchers, but in the future, we will try to uh, give some, uh, give some, uh, uh, templates or or online, uh, so online endpoints to solve it. Okay, I guess yeah, Spark QL. Uh, template, yeah. Of course, uh, SQL is um a technical language that um, not all can uh, easily to understand or use yeah uh, it's a good one um, you you all already uh, look at the uh, latest technology embedded for the information retrieval on the web yeah uh, I guess can I ask you all I guess you all is an undergrad student right oh uh, yes. We are junior students now. Um, are you you're all in the uh, year three at the end of your undergrad study? Or in what year? Uh, we are in the junior year. Junior year. Mm -hmm. So it's good exposure for you all um, because we are in, um, in our Faculty of Information Management, University of Technology Mara. Uh, we are still uh, teaching uh, database a uh, novel, uh, database management systems, and um, in terms of retrie retrieval, we just uh, expose students with the search retrieval or text retrieval uh, uh, courses to our student. Uh, but um, our undergrad student also um, rarely to expose such this conference. So congratulations to you all. Uh, I guess uh, there is no other question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we go to... 
I can conclude that um, all of five presentation have um, uh, all significant contribution uh, to you all, uh, to your country and society. Uh, it's good to explore. Uh, it's good to have uh, uh, to make example uh, from one to another uh, research. Uh, and um, there is also fruitful um, uh, comment from the floor, from the panels. Uh, thank you so much for the participation, lending uh, us your ears, and hopefully we can see we uh, see again in other sessions and discuss more in other platforms. Uh, with that, I guess um, we can end of our uh, DCMI. Uh, this am I uh, student forum two, two thousand twenty one. Thank you so much. <laughs>